Right, so let's have a look at Play 2 now. So I'm going to do Play 2. Uh, this is a recorded TV show on this machine, recorded by uh, the Vista Partition. I'm going to watch it on there. So I can go on to here, go Play 2, Fangio, contact the machine. Uh, this is the DLNA controller, this is the Play 2 controller. So now this is going to stream that TV show across this machine, which is just starting to... to you know, playing that back. So there we go. So that is content on this machine uh, that I can control from this machine. I'm basically just using that as a playback machine. Now this is going from Windows 7 to Windows 7. But there are other uh, DLNA compliant devices on this network that I could play that to. So it just depends on, on what you want to, uh, on the type of content. So I can play to, so it's from here to there. Okay, let's go to some music. This is uh, an album I made. And um, so I want to play that one. And I can say play to now. So I can choose this machine, the HP Media Smart Connect, so it's an extender the other side of the room. A sound bridge, which is a Roku sound bridge, uh, which is just a music player. So I can play it straight through there, or I can choose the Windows 7 device. So let's uh, play one of these. So play to that machine, get the controller up there, it talks to the machine. Ah, there you go, that's playing now. So obviously playing one track is a bit of a pain, but so you can choose to you know, select a range of tracks uh, and do play two. You can do you know, the whole album. Um, but you've also got some control over it as well. Uh, let's, there we go, that's just starting to play now. But you can actually control the playback. So that's starting to play now. Like I said before, you can pause. You can, re you can you can also do the volume as well. So I can control volume, I can even mute it. So to be DLA compliant, you've got to respond to the transport controls, and you've got to also respond to the, to the volume and everything else. So the volume you can see affected on the machine. So it responds to complete control, uh, and I really like that. So I can send it to my Roku Sound Bridge, uh, which has got a little LCD display on it. But not particularly good for creating huge, you know, fantastic um, playlists. You can currently playlist here, do play to, and off it goes. The other thing you can do as well, let's say um, content stored on another machine. It's going to be interesting to see. I'm not not lot on this one, I think. Okay, so here's the example before. This is an album that. You know, a track that is installed on another, or is on another machine, it doesn't exist on this machine and I can still do play too, so I can go on to here and do play to and that's not going to start playing on there now so in this case this machine is just acting as a controller to the play to and it's going from the machine down there directly to this machine. And if I shut this machine down now, um, this would still have that play play relationship. So I can go from there to there, there to there, and whatever you want to do. And the same works with pictures and um, videos and everything else. Let's go to pictures. Let's quickly show you that. Uh, let's have a look at this. Do play to that machine. You have to actually do that. There we go, that's going to fire up on there in a bit. There we go, so that's on there. So, probably a better scenario would be um, I go, I come onto my, let's say, you know, you've know, you got your, your picture stored on here, and um, you've got your picture stored on your netbook. Let me go to the library and say OK. Uh, here's a picture I took. Have a look at this. Play to 
and I'll send it to uh, this machine. But I could send it to an Xbox 360 connected to this machine and do the play to, and that way then you can see I've got that up on there. So if you want to say, hey, look up the pictures, just send it that way, that play to. The only stipulation is the devices have to be on the network and you have to have enabled the sharing. So don't, they don't have to be in the home group or anything like that. So that means that somebody could bring the netbook round and show off the, the pictures as well, you know, say so have a look at my pictures and uh, rather than huddling, huddling round a uh, little laptop, uh, you can just play to the Xbox 360 on your plasma TV or on your main media centre machine. So that's a really nice uh, area that I like in Windows 7. One thing I want to show you on Windows Media Center, the start menu, is you can go on here, a little arrow there, and you can see it, new recorded TV, frequent uh, use. So I can just go straight to play live TV. So you can go start live TV, start uh, a, a new recorded show. So if you just watch the show and you want to play it back, you can do that. That's one of the little neat things like in uh, in Windows 7. Now these little things just make life a little bit easier. And then I can even pin that one as well. So let's pin that. Okay, so we picked a live channel that's off air at the moment. So, that's what's, so I've pinned that live TV now. So let me uh, close that. If I go to the, there now, you see you've got pin live TV. So, so it's start media center live TV. Just a quick way of getting into it, uh, quite like that. So one of the little things that they've done in, in Windows 7 makes things a bit better. So that's a quick uh, overview of some of the features in Windows 7. As you can see, so it's just the nice thing is like the home group just makes sharing content easier. Play 2 makes things easier and, and you see the touch screen elements. Uh, that's a, a really nice, that's a bit of a wow factor on, on that one. So overall this, this build 7000 beta of Media Center has been pretty stable. I found a couple of issues, it's crashed a few times while I was recording this. Uh, there's a, a, a bug with one of the tuner cards I think and I've had a bit of choppy playback. But these are all the things you would expect during the beta. Uh, Windows 7 itself seems very stable, I'm really happy with that. So, thanks for watching this video. If you've got anything you want to see, let me know in at digitallifestyle.com or you can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash isdixon. I'll see you around on the blog and thanks for watching. Bye.